Hi, I'm Zeno Makes Music. And I'm Ryan Ayers. And this is GFA TV. Were we supposed to say that together? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. we'll say GFA <laughs> This is GFA TV. <laughs> As you know, GFA TV has two episodes per month. We have one episode always coming out at the middle of the month and one episode always coming out at the end of the month. So we're going to be alternating. At these middle month episodes, we're doing something special called GFA TV Spotlight, where we review a guitar topic that you recommend us. And since we're just starting out today, I recommended the topic. And we're talking about fake nails today. <laughs> yeah. Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Ryan Ayers, resident fake nails player here at the GFA, and he's gonna tell us about how he puts on his nails, why he has fake nails, and the advantages of knowing how to apply fake nails, all sorts of fake nail topics. So, you wanna tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. I've been doing fake nails now since about 2000, Three, 2002, 2003, every time I had a really good set of natural nails, I would, that would be about two or three days of magic. And then I would decide to go play frisbee or drop my car keys and bend to pick them up or ram my fingers into a door yeah. and my natural nails would just go away. So the acrylics all of a sudden took care of all the breaking problems and gave me the benefit of I had a really good ramp and I could get a really good tone. And I think even Martha was impressed that I was able to get some really good tone. So it did take some time to work with my um, salon person, Miss Melissa, to get what would be guitar nails versus instead of, you know, very cool um, manicured nails. And But we finally found a system and I haven't looked back ever since. I've had fake nails for is that 18 years, 18 wow. years. Also, really quick side note before we start, I want to do another Instagram challenge. The meme contest was such an amazing success. I want to have you guys post pictures of your guitar nails. So post with the hashtag GFA nails and we'll feature your nails in the next episode. There are a few reasons why you might choose to do fake nails. Your nails break too often. Maybe your nails are, are brittle and thin. Maybe your nails uh, just have the wrong shape. They have little dips and curls and catches and edges that just drive you crazy. Or maybe you actually, you broke one and you have a concert or you wanna get right back to practicing. You can put a full set on in about an hour and a half um, and get right back to practicing. If you just need one nail, you can get it going 10, 15 minutes and you're right back on your guitar. So Ryan, what do we have here? So this is my acrylic setup. Starts with the KISS brand, K-I-S-S, uh, Complete Salon Acrylic Kit. Guitar foundation, my favorite. Oh, look at that. Four-sided buffer. And my tried and true file, which will also get a new one out of this kit. A face mask, some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this is for cleaning, very important to have um, what's gonna be underneath the acrylics be cleaned and prepped. This is my paper towel for the alcohol. And then this is my paper towel for the acrylic set and something to protect whatever I'm doing the acrylics on. So this is just a piece of junk mail that will protect this nice stool. And there's my acrylic set. All right, so we've got our, uh, our materials laid out. It's like a science experiment. What's the first step? First step is to make sure that you're outside. Um, you don't wanna be doing this uh, if you have roommates or even if you just wanna be in your house for the rest of the day. You don't wanna be inside, these are pretty noxious chemicals. Um, if you have to be inside, definitely keep it well ventilated, definitely wear a mask, um, and then air out the place as best you can. So I'm gonna open up my complete set here. And we actually have a lot of extras in here that we don't need. So the shapers I found more confusing than helpful. The buffer block, also not my favorite. We do have the little jar for the acrylic liquid. Definitely need that. I'm gonna put this on my piece of junk mail here, protected from the stool. The actual acrylic liquid, primer, the powder, and then this is pretty new in the last few years. This is a Apple Fresh masking liquid. So a few drops as we put the acrylic liquid in, and it doesn't necessarily smell like apples, but man, it takes the sting out of the smell of the acrylic just a little bit. So love that Kiss is doing this now. Apple Fresh, couple drops in. And then this is actually really great. They give you some nail glue in here. Um, so I keep this for quick fixes and for chips in the nails and if I need to do a quick backfill. So this is a little bit of extra that we're just gonna keep in our kit here uh, and save it for a rainy day. 
underneath a brand new file, which I love this Kiss brand file. Uh, really great at shaping the nails. Our brush. You've got all your sizes of tips that you can put on. And they sound like plastic because they are plastic and don't make great tone. The acrylic liquid itself um, with the powder can give the best, most rounded tone, but feel free to experiment if you'd like. And then there's a, this little stick, which sometimes can help if you're having trouble shaping the nail and you don't want to use your left hand fingertips to help shape it. You can use the stick. I tend not to, but it's here in case you need it. So we're going to put that right back in. Ta-da! <laughs> if you're using a hard file with a, a low grit, we actually want to use an old file and soften up these edges, and this will save us from accidentally cutting or slicing into the little soft fingertips that we have under our nails. So there's my natural nails, and I'm gonna just rough them up a little bit with the file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just give a nice scraping to the top of my nail. This helps the acrylic adhere better to our natural nail. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going hard, I'm going very light, just trying to give enough kind of grooves for the acrylic to adhere. Nails are prepped. Next, cleanliness is necked. Necked. <laughs> cleanliness is necked. <laughs> cleanliness is next to Segovianess. So have that alcohol ready. Uh, it actually does two parts. It, one, it makes sure that our nail is clean and then it also makes sure that our nail bed is dry. Uh, any moisture trapped underneath uh, your acrylic could lead to fungal growth. So we want to avoid that at all costs. So a little bit of alcohol both cleans the nail, gets it ready and dries it out, which helps the adherence. Right. So I'm just gonna give a couple sprays here and then really just be pretty liberal with making sure my entire nail, maybe a little bit underneath, gets the alcohol. And as you'll see, it'll just evaporate. And now we have a really nice dry nail bed ready for acrylics. This is our acrylic primer. And this has a nice handy dandy brush built right in. And we can see that the nail just kind of soaks it right up and it gives it a little bit of a shine. So you'll be able to see if you've covered your entire nail with the primer. If you're susceptible to strong smells, highly suggest putting on the mask. It's not gonna be great for videoing, so I'm gonna go ahead and brave the smells today. So now we are ready to actually make the nails. So we have our few drops of Apple Fresh into our acrylic jar, and now I'm gonna add the acrylic liquid into this jar. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of fill it to the top, and I'm gonna close the lid. We don't need two sources of acrylic liquid coming at our senses. And if the smell is too bad, go ahead and take that Apple Fresh acrylic masker, add another drop or two, and it helps lighten that smell. We are going to now wet the brush in the acrylic liquid. The brush is pretty stiff at first, so go ahead and give it a few rounds in the liquid. And then we have this paper towel here to kind of get that liquid off and get the brush pliable and ready to shape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice good brush load. I don't wanna get dripping wet with it, so I kind of use the edge. And now I'm gonna use that brush right here in the acrylic powder, and we'll see that as I put it in, the acrylic powder kind of adheres to it and makes a little bead, and that is slowly hardening. So I wanna get this onto my nail, and then all the white bits, all the dry powder, I wanna make sure I wet. And so I'm just using the brush to kind of shape it and pat it into the shape of the nail that I want kind of making sure I get all the way back to the cuticle, making sure I get along the sides. And I'm just patting it slightly and then pressing up at the top to give, if I need an extra nail extension, I can kind of brush upwards and I'll take that acrylic up. If I push too hard, I'm kind of folding the acrylic over my natural nail. So I'm gonna go underneath and just kind of pop that back just a little bit. Pad, pad, pad. And now what I'm looking for is just evenness of the acrylic powder. Did I get any thin spots? Did I get any super thick spots? And so this actually looks pretty good. So there's a fly who now is attra attracted to the acrylic smell. The apple 
And you can see I've actually, I've really overbuilt this nail. This is much longer, much thicker than I need, but um, that's okay because we're gonna do our final shaping with the file. But right now, pinky looking pretty good. A finger is gonna take just a little bit more acrylic, so I'm gonna leave a little more liquid on. So I've got a nice big bead. I kind of shake off a little bit of the excess if there's some more dry acrylic powder on there. Again, I lay it onto the nail and then I try and wet all the light white parts, all the dry powder. And you can see I've got it at the top of my nail and this allows me to kind of fan it out towards the widest part of my nail of where I want the shape to be. And I'm pushing down towards the back. And because A finger's a little bit bigger than the pinky, I'm actually gonna do this in two layers. This is gonna be the top of the nail first, and then I'll fill the back of it. And so what I've done is I've left the acrylic a little bit thicker up here at the top so that as it starts to harden, I can start to flatten it out and up, giving myself a nice long nail to play with in terms of my shape. And then I use the corners, making sure I'm pushing the corners down and following the contour of my natural nail. And then it's starting to stiffen a little bit so I can kind of press upwards and outwards to get that extension of the nail. And right now I do have some good, decently long natural nails underneath, which helps this process. But if I had no nails, I would just wait a little bit longer so it stiffened and then shape the nail outwards so I can have just 100% acrylic nails extending out over my fingertips. And I'm finding it's a little bit thick and not quite as tall as I need it over on this left side. So here's what I like to do. I like to get a little bit of acrylic liquid. I like to pinch it between my thumb and my forefinger. And now I can actually pinch the acrylic and shape it with my thumb and forefinger. Just light pinches. And that gives us the width and the length that we need. And here's where that handy dandy little alcohol rag comes in. I can use that to get the acrylic liquid off my fingertips and move on. I've only done really the tip of my A finger. I need to put the rest of the acrylic on the back. I don't need quite as much because that would make it a little too thick. So I'm gonna go a couple brush strokes to get that liquid off. Form a small to medium sized bead. Shake off the excess. And now I'm gonna start in the back. Again, wetting all the dry parts. And now pushing the acrylic liquid towards the back of the nail and filling in any of the gaps or divots that was left from my first round of doing the top of the nail. And now I'm gonna brush from the back to the front to try and get a nice smooth nail. This will save me some time and effort in the filing later if I can have a nice top smooth nail shape. And now A finger's looking pretty good. I do have kind of a ridge in the center. Again, not the end of the world because we're gonna file that off afterwards. So two-parter, we're gonna do the same thing on M finger. Four down, one to go. Let's get, let's get the thumb going. This is the biggest nail, of course, so I'm gonna try and get a big bead to start. And because it's the thumb, I know I'm gonna need a little bit more, so I'm gonna go in for a second bead here. And that first bead I put on was hardening pretty quick, so I'm actually doing a little bit firmer of some pads with the brush. The second one's a little softer. Again, you start to get a feel for it, so depending on the weather and the temperature outside, the pliability and how fast the acrylic sets will change, but you start to get a nice feel for how it's gonna go on that day. And this one can definitely benefit from our little left hand pinch technique. We need a little bit of acrylic liquid. Kind of just doing a little, a little shaping with my left hand to help me down the line when I'm filing. And this is our final step. And that is the application process. But I'm gonna try and clean this brush just a little bit from the acrylic liquid so that we can use, we can get a second use out of this brush. And we move on to filing. 
few things to keep in mind as you're working on these acrylics is the width. We have the ability to go extra wide with our, our fake nails. I tend to go just a little bit wider than my fingertip. That gives me a lot of play with my ramp. Um, thickness, too thick means we're gonna have a very meaty attack uh, area on the string. And so finding the right thickness, it will be thicker than a natural nail, but we don't wanna go super beefy, thick, thick nails. You wanna watch for any catches, any overhangs, any edges, um, anything, especially around the sides and the back of the nail. Those will catch if we're doing any, any sort of back of nail strums. And then any overhangs from, uh, from underneath the nail, we wanna get rid of those as well because those can actually catch as we're plucking the string uh, in a more natural motion. So there's, there's three steps to the filing, which is so the black and the big grit to really work it down. And then I'll do the silver side to get a little smoother and then I'll buff and then I can play right away. So after a nice lengthy file um, and buff session, I've got my new set of acrylics on and it's time to play some guitar. Now keep in mind, you just put your hand through a good amount of stress. So if you're feeling a little tired, don't, uh, you don't have to jump on your guitar right away. You can go ahead and take a little break. Also, that's your chance to try out uh, an extra lengthy nail. Don't try and get the perfect length right away. Go ahead, try out a little bit of extra length because your hands will kind of adjust and your playing will adjust. So over the next two days is where I'll really start to dial in the shape of the nails that I want. I've left them a little long for right now, but let's go ahead and play a little music. Okay, thank you so much, Video Ryan. Now back to real, real life, Ryan. <laughs> now that the acrylic smell has worn off and my nose can breathe again, I just want to thank you guys all for watching this tutorial, and I hope you found something 
insightful within its contents. If you have any questions about acrylics or fake nails or anything that you want to share about your experience with them, please let us know in the comments or send us a letter or an email or a phone call. Pigeon mail? Pigeon. We always <laughs> accept pigeons. We're ready for the pigeons. And don't forget, uh, post with the hashtag GFA Nails and have a chance to be featured on our channel and in this episode and on the GFA video Instagram. So we'll catch you on the 31st for the next episode. Catch you on the 31st. Yeah, Halloween special. <laughs> Take care, okay? <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.